Hi, I'm Ida, and you're watching part two of a three-part series. So here's a short little summary of the first video that you can go watch afterwards. I went to Slovakia for 10 days in a group of 10 bloggers to promote the area. So this is day four of 10. And on day four, we went to Strasna to see traditional horse-led woodlocking, which is an old practice that spares the forest of the damage that machine-led work does. There's a special bond between the horse and its person, and they work together using his voice as the guide for when to stop, go, or be careful. It was uh, intense and interesting to see this symbiotic work in the unpredictable terrain of the forest, and quite impressive. The National Park is working on clearing out some of the firs to increase the diversity of the forest, both in terms of tree types and the ages of the trees. We then went to see the sheep kept for grazing the forest meadow areas. They were a breed local to the area, and they were all wearing bells. It was a very sweet and special sound to be immersed in when they were herded by the dog or ran down to drink from a stream. I know that I could personally spend just about an entire day just gazing at sheep, so I hope that you also enjoy these clips of the sheep running down the hill to get to the water and then being by the water, being generally really cute. It was really nice to be in the shadow as the sun was sharp and warm. I reapplied my sunscreen so many times on this trip. We were then shown a canyon road which is paved uh, because it used to be a road for cars, which makes it uniquely more accessible. <laughs> I enjoyed some time here alone to explore. Everyone was spreading out to document. I found this amazing little stream and waterfall that I would have ideally just kept following if it were up to me, but we all had to collect again. This place really reminds me of Sweden, actually, with the big rocks like this, and moss, and water nearby. It's really beautiful here. I wish I could just stay and stay and stay. There are so many butterflies, 
I can cool down in the water. They have these special orchids, wild orchids. It's just, I thought it was a man-made thing first, because it's just like a slab of rock. But I think it's natural. After that, we went to get lunch at a ranch under the sharp rock. Uh, that's the translation of its name. It was named after a nearby protruding peak. They had very nice facilities with these big swings and they made me a great vegan lunch, which at this point I did not take for granted. <laughs> the ranch is a family-run business and is a converted old state farm. It was interesting to hear about the hard work put into creating local business and supporting farmers and sustainable land keeping. <laughs> we were then taken to a horseback riding session and man the area was really really breathtaking <laughs> I want to thank Linda for helping me film these clips of me on the horse. Uh, that was one of the perks of being with a whole group of people who kind of do social media. It was a lot less uh, weird to ask things like this. After the lunch and the horseback riding, we went to a lake to have a picnic dinner, to relax, and to try out the inflatable canoe which our host Josef and Svetlana brought. It was a very beautiful lake surrounded by greenery and rocky mountains. I had a lovely and relaxing ride on the canoe. I was sitting at the forefront so I didn't have to paddle or anything. I always love being out on water and especially surrounded by such a breathtaking view. There's a train track out here and I happened to capture the train passing by while we were sailing, which felt very lucky. Finally, we enjoyed some Armenian songs from Noro, and then everyone went back to their hotels. day five, we were shown the Kopanek Meadows, which is a place of high biodiversity due to a combination of water streams and limestone content in the soil. So we were greeted by a myriad of flowers and bees and frogs, buzzing insects and plants. The whole place really reminded me of Howl's Moving Castle, uh, that special magical portal he takes Sophie through and it's just this beautiful flower meadow that reminded me of that. And generally, a lot of the places we saw in Solakia reminded me of the Ghibli universe.
were shown some of the edible plants and herbs of the meadow. And then I sat down to transfer some files from my SD card so I had storage to keep filming. Uh, it was definitely a nice work spot. The next event was a hike in a canyon area close to where I would be staying for the rest of the trip, in a place called Padlsak. Here we were close to a place where many tourists come from neighboring countries to hike the area or do via ferrata. We were told a little of the folklore and history of the place. We were also shown a beehive in which they hosted bees, but not for harvesting wax or honey, just to help pollinate the area. Yep. We got to roll a beeswax candle, which I brought home with me, and I was very proud of it. I love the smell of those things. On the sixth day, I had a nice slow morning at the Podlesak hotel I stayed at with a mountain view. I had some time to do some work and to reflect in my journal before we went on one of the aforementioned hikes in the canyon. supposed to rain today so we're having a slow morning for the first time all this whole trip and I actually really like this temperature of weather it reminds me of home but uh, yeah we're gonna be outside a lot so I hope it doesn't rain this is my first night at a hotel here and it's a really nice place the view is really nice from this hotel the mountains are this way so we can't see it at first we were placed in a room with a mountain view, but now we still have a mountain view, it's just uh, smaller mountains, it's still nice. And we can just go outside and look, so let me show you. Isn't that just adorable? For this canyon hike, we were warned that you couldn't turn around once you'd started, and that we needed to be sure that we wouldn't get spooked by the heights. It was a humid day with occasional rain, and a thunderstorm actually occurred while we were hiking. This made the canyon feel very exotic to me, this very lively, humid, thunderous place with a river and several mountain protrusions with a pathway nailed into the rock for us to pass directly over the river. It was quite thrilling for me and very different from what I normally do, which is a lot of walking around in a city or sitting down being a student. <laughs> um, I was dressed in just like a completely everyday outfit, which looking back on is kind of hilarious. Just me and my button up and my Fjellreon backpack, working up a sweat and connecting with my inner child who loved climbing and sports involving nature. Have I seen one? Cookies, the frog. <laughs> <laughs> we passed through shallow streams and climbed these amazing long ladders to get to the top. 
and to the end of the trail. At the end of the trail, we had a nice break for lunch, and we had an amazing herbal tea with uh, plants taken from the area. If you wanted to keep no. warm, no spoon. It should no. be on. Then we were shown the old cathedral ruins resting here, which are being restored by a passionate team of volunteers, which is a really cool project. Europe, the similar monasteries, yeah. So this was an uh, office, this was a bedroom behind this partition. The house, sorry, the house was uh, in uh, the kitchen. Yeah. We had dinner at another family-owned ranch. I tried the poppy seed noodles and when I got to my hotel, I journaled for a short bit and then I went into bed exhausted after so many impressions. I was really satisfied with the experience though. All right, so thank you so much for watching part two. Go watch part one if you haven't and stay tuned for the final part. I hope you enjoyed.